Hello, and thank you for watching. I'm Jennifer Bowman with Olympia Piano, and this is gonna be a short video on Clementi's Sonatina in C major, opus 36, number one. I'm just gonna go straight through the piece and go over the fingering options I discuss with students who are learning this piece. So in measures one and two, the right hand has a C second inversion chord, and there are two fingering options I generally suggest for this, just depends on how it feels. First option is standard second inversion fingering, which would be three, five, one. And your hand may be used to this, so this may feel very comfortable. It also anchors here on finger three. The other option is to use two, four, two, one. And this option also feels really nice. I like using two and four because it spreads my hand out a little bit more and gets ready for that octave. So that's what I would suggest for measures one and two. So measure three, the main thing you need to understand is measure four needs to start with finger five. So we have two ways to do that. We can either cross over with two, and then you just have to scoot over a little bit and drop on five, or you can cross with finger three. Three, and then you don't have to move. Personally, I feel like the two is stronger though, and it forces your hand to lighten up on beats three and four. So again, do what works for your hand. The end of measure six and measure seven, we've got the broken thirds passage. Most editions agree that we should do four, two, three, one, four, two, three, one. Just notice on the last one, the two is gonna be on a black key and your thumb's gonna basically stay where it was. So don't get your thumb over here at the end. Couple of tips for practicing this. I would suggest practicing in blocks. Four, two, three, one, four, two, three, one, four, two. And when you cross over, feel the four, two pivoting over your thumb. Then when you play them one at a time, give a slight drop whenever you're playing finger three. So you feel three, three, one, because beat one and beat three are the strong beats. So that's why we'd want to emphasize them. Okay, measure 12, we've got this arpeggio here. Again, we've got to get to D on the top. So depending on the size of your hand, you can either use one, two, four, five, four, or one, two, three, five, four. If you use four, your fourth finger is gonna to have to scoot over there really quickly to that C. If you use three, the four is already there. Measure 13, most editions agree that the fingering should be three, two, four, three, five, four, three, two. So my suggestion usually is feel beats one, two, and three. So you're gonna feel a three, four, five. It's kind of like a down. The three, four, and five have a little more weight to them. So down, touch, down, touch, down, smooth. Instead of just playing like that. So measures 13 to 14, we've got this little finger switch here on the E. And so the way I usually suggest you do this is feel a little bit of up on the last E, so you'll feel down, up, down. And then you're gonna grab the other notes after the switch. So you're gonna feel down, up, down, scoot. So you'll have a down impetus on the A, the E, beat one of measure 14, and the D, beat three of measure 14. measure 16 and 17 like the beginning you could either use three five three five or two four it just depends on how your hand feels for a larger hand my hands a little larger so I might prefer to do two all right now moving forward to measure 22 kind of like in measure four the main thing here is that you want to have finger five on beat three so you're coming off of these octaves and by the way on the octaves generally feel the down on the top so down touch down touch down touch don't try to play them even the same down touch down 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 
notice the U shape here during the octaves. So measure 22. You can either do two, three, four, two, scoot, five. Remember the E flat. So remember how we did that before. We kind of lifted it up right here and then headed down. So the other way you could do it is measure 21 to 20. We're coming from the octaves. Grab it with three and then you don't have to move. So just try to give a down, down, down. Then we're like the beginning. So it's um, this is the recap, 24, 28, just like the beginning. Let's get to measure 30. The main thing is we're gonna have beat four of measure 29 is gonna be fifth finger. So way number one, you could hop down Four, two, three, one, four, two, three, one, one. Remember your pivots, even though it's staccato. So way number two is starting the thirds with three, one. Three, one, four, two, three, one, four, two, one. That feels like what we had before. If you want some consistency there, although there's no black keys in this measure 30, you could do that. And the other way you could do it we have a detached note on this C anyway, and we're hopping the tempos not too crazy fast. You can hop this pinky down and have the first third be five, three. So you could go five, three, four, two, three, one, two, one. Keeps it nice and bouncy if you can do that. Okay, and then the final fingering is here at the end, measures 37 to 38. Most editions agree on the broken third. So you're coming from 36 with five on the A, cross with four, one, four, two, three, one, four, three, two, one. In this case, we're gonna give a little extra down motion on the thumb. So. And again, you could practice this. Four, two, three, one, four, two, three, one. Thank you for watching the short video on fingering options for Clementi's Sonatina in C major, opus 36, number one. Any questions, please write to me in the comments or send me an email. I hope you subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And as always, thank you for watching.